two. In this video, we'll be discussing a second type of insert that we'll be creating in this series. And so for this, we'll start off in box cutter and I'll press D and switch to circle. And holding control, we're getting our jump off point here for the face center because we have snapping on for faces. Under our snapping options, we'll just jump off of here. But instead of extruding, I'm just gonna press J and this will allow me to extrude it out and we'll bring it out just a bit but I'll hold shift and keep it live. And using hard ops, I'm gonna go in wire mode and select this bottom face. And we're just gonna press Q and control click mark, which is gonna cause a reverse bevel, but this time at the base instead of the outer, it's a different type of reverse bevel than usual. But what we'll also do is go into edit mode and select this top face. And when we control click mark, we see that things go awry, but by shift scrolling, we can actually put this at the top where it's supposed to be, but because it's a bull shape and we're setting this up in edit mode, we'll also need to press N to flip the normal. And then I'll just press one to reset it and we have our first piece set up. So we can tab out of edit mode and press one and this is where we are. So the next thing I'll do is bring another circle out and we'll just hold shift, keep it live, grab this top face and control clicking mark. We'll just extrude that out just giving us a nice little opening. And so by selecting the main shape, we can grab this area and we'll press J to turn it into a join. And we'll just jump off of it once again to create a little lip that comes out. And then finally we'll grab this, extrude it in, press T. And basically this is our result so far. So in order to create a little ring to go around this, I'm going to go under my Q menu and we're gonna shift click Smart Apply. And by shift clicking Smart Apply, we've made a duplicate that's already selected. So I'm just gonna go in vertex mode with one and just select any ring that I want and press Control I, select the inverse and delete it. And then we could just grab this, move it up. And we'll just look at this in top view and I'm just gonna grab these two. And by shift clicking Mark, we can use our edit tool to just grow our selection as needed and then press spacebar to apply and we can just delete these vertices. And finally, we'll just grab these endpoints, extrude them down, and then finally grab these three and just give them a simple bevel. And we'll press control one, put one level of subdivision. Then under the Q menu, we can hit it with a curve extract to give it a little area around it as a railing. So the next thing from here is to basically get all of our cutters back and begin making the transition to make this into an insert because this is successful so far. So we'll save our file as insert test. And we're now saving our insert test. And I'm gonna jump this over to the folder that we've been working on, which is our new demo. And the first thing I wanna do is move this, but we see that we're not able to move it freely. So if we press Q and we go under operations, we could choose late parent where we can now move this because we've now parented it along with the children and the things related to it as cutters. And by selecting this and parenting via pressing W to first exit box cutter because pressing control with snapping will deselect curves. And I just exit box cutter for that. So now we have our shape set up. I'm gonna press GZ minus one. And you might be wondering why I didn't just move the cube down to begin with. And it's basically to go through and show you all of these steps working in conjunction whenever you're needing to move booleans around and the like. So continuing on from here, we can just press H to hide this and we can just unhide all of our cutters. And we just want to take this cutter and just control P parent it to this. So this object's basically the main. In fact, we can select everything and control P parent it to this. So now we're basically good to go. In fact, we probably want to unparent this object and keep the transform and then just apply all the location, rotation and transforms for rotation, location and scale. And from here with just our parent selected, we can choose create insert. And we see that things are a little bit messy, but because of the latest insert to kit offs, we add a little care to the insert creation system to make sure that things are working right for Booleans. So if we transition this over to union, we see that this is now a union and this shape on the inside was also a union. So we want to make sure that that's a union and also the Boolean order was kept. This was something that I found was also quite important in the past and somehow we lost it. 
but this isn't something that we're supposed to be losing. So let's go ahead and save our insert at this point. So we'll save our insert and this is circular four. So I'm just gonna select circular three and then just click plus to increment it by one. And we see that our color has returned. So because this is a scene for um, cycles, that means that there's already a bevel added to the render itself. So all we really need to do to embellish for the thumbnail is to just get a nice selection going. You know, we might want to even change the sub material that's being used. So let's actually take a look at this. We can actually select the add in this case. And then if we control click blank material scroll or actually shift click, we're actually scrolling through endless iterations of material scroll for what would be basically the additive area for our Boolean setup. So we're just trying to get a very nice result for the render. However, I see that if I select the floor and then control click bevel, I could probably actually get an even finer result happening. So we just bring it into something reasonable, a little hard to tell looking at the render, but I believe we have it. And from here, we can go ahead and render our thumbnail and just give it a small weight and just close our factory scene. So now we're back in our scene where we started, except we're in render and we can just control S save this and we'll just control N jump to a new file and just with the KitOps panel, jump to our new demo and locate our circular that probably is one of our best looking ones yet. Maybe even, you know, lower to auto smooth to help it out and we'll just start plugging these on. And this particular insert is interesting because there's so many possibilities for it. And this is actually just a start because this insert is kind of a multi-use insert of sorts. So if we look at this in render mode, we see that it's got a smooth, nice transition with each of the surfaces. And if we even give this uh, main surface a blank material, we can jump it over to look dev and we actually have a nice scene happening with our render so far, you know, for something just testing out. But with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time. So this insert that we added, while it looks pretty cool, is fairly generic. If we get out of render mode and we turn off auto select insert, we can actually select just the insert itself. And if we were to press Q and adjust the bevel, we can see that we're adjusting the innermost bevel. And if you've been saving up your bevel profiles and you're losing, using the latest update of hard ops by pressing shift P, you can scroll through custom bevel profiles, basically allow you to scroll and find just the most random profiles that you've ever seen. If you've been storing them up and just be able to set these up on the fly on this particular insert to get some really unique and interesting results. So that's something that I do expect I hope to go you know more in depth in in the future but for now i just wanted to do something that was actually talking about that particular topic in general Two.